everybody, I'm going to make this fast and to the point. State meets, you know, championship phase. Right now, with Airtay Throws Nation, we have members all over the United States, members around the world, and every year this time when we get close to championship phase, we get questions. You know, I get a lot of our member coaches just asking for, you know, second opinion on what they've laid out and whatnot. And just recently, a lot of athletes and coaches have been messaging and asking questions as to what should be done, you know, anything specific to lifting and throwing that you do when you're preparing for like your state championship. So a good question. And over the years, I've put out a lot of quick tips on this. So I'm going to kind of do this to support that. And I'm just going to create up a couple of links under a few things. There's easy ways to save throws. I think some key little details. We'll try to link up that YouTube video here. But in general, what are we trying to do? We're trying to make sure that we prepare and mock competition situations. So my personal approach, there's, there's a lot of in-depth ways to do things. I like to keep things always really simple. One, we're focusing on one or two key technical cues that are going to put everything into place. So especially with the throwing chain reaction, you know, the whole concept that we really focus on is those key things that are setting up the optimal reaction. So we're working on one or two things that are going to fix automatically three, four things. That's super critical. Number two is we're always mocking comp situation. All week last week, I was very insistent and this week prior to our state championship, we get four warm up throws, six competition throws, fouls count, everything. So we have our athletes, usually we have a lot of discs in practice. So most of our athletes are usually all throwing at least four implements in every practice. When we get to this phase, we take two, just like you would most likely get in your competition warm up. So it's two throws, walk out, grab the disc. We have all of our athletes really filing into one ring at this point. So we're really creating that same scenario that they're going to see in competition. So whether that's the discus or the shot shot, you tend to get a moves a little faster than the discus just because, you know, everything's shorter distances faster. The, the retrieval time is usually quicker, but same kind of process. We take about five throws in the shot. You seem to be able to get five to maybe six. So it's usually a couple stands to get the hand warmed up and then go through a basic progression. But for discus, it's four. One of the things we emphasize that oftentimes some meets are only allowing one throw or one throw at a time. So I said, be prepared for that. You might only get four total throws. You might only get one at a time. Sure enough, that happened yesterday at the state meet. First round, they got two. Next round, they all got one. So my thrower was able to win her division. Congrats to Elena Diggs, winning the girls' discus division two. But she experienced exactly what we had been practicing. So that was prepared. So mock your competition warm-up scenario. Know when you're going to warm up, how many minutes out. We always focus on that. Usually, it's real hot here. So 30 minutes out, we're warming up. Then we're stretching, then we're doing drills. And by the time your flight's called, you're completely warmed up. You're ready to go. You get your four or five throws and you're off to comp. So I think that's it. Practicing, you know, making sure that you're working a little bit more to save your competition training throws. So six throws, we get in the rhythm, like I said, of warming up just like we're going to do in the meet and throwing just like we're going 100%, six full throws, and then we continue practice. So that's how we recommend kind of the preparation for the week. Weight training wise, we still lift. Our program is centered around block periodization. So we go a volume phase, a strength phase, and we call it a realization phase. We kind of follow a little bit more of the Verhershansky kind of model to block periodization. So it's worked out very well for our, our throwers. So we're light, fast, usually the day before we're resting, but we're lifting all the way through, but we've backed off the volume and the intensity. We're still moving the weights quick, but they're lighter. The sets are shorter. The amount of exercises are less so that we're fresh, but the athletes still feel strong, snappy, and they're throwing well. And we tend to get a lot of PRs. A good chunk of our athletes had PRs yesterday. That's kind of the plan. Those are our quick tips. Hopefully you find that helpful. We're going to get this out because there's a lot of stuff this weekend. And if you just have practice today or tomorrow or just a few, just make sure you practice that same type of situation you're going to experience in the meet. You should be prepared. So that way when it happens, you're not surprised and you're ready to go because that's what you've been doing. And that's the mindset you want to be in. So hopefully that helps. Thanks so much. We'll see you on the next video.